coding from API to SDK. This video is designed as a brief overview of the coding environment including the processes and the tools that you will use as a mobile application developer. Coding is all about creating code. It's an idea so simple that it seems almost silly, but as a developer, how you create code, your coding techniques and tools, has a great impact on your effectiveness. Over the history of coding, the process of creating code has evolved. In the old school, computer code was written on a simple notepad, a raw text editor. More recently, coders have created text editors with coding functions built in. They're like text editors that already have the important coding processes already dialed in for you. Many coders, both old school and new, still hold up the text editor as the only way to write real code. You'll see them on forums and maybe meet them in projects. They believe the old ways work best. But do they? That's a question only you can answer for you, and only experimentation and experience will tell. These days a lot of code, a lot of it, is generated using some form of software development kit. A software development kit is software that's used to write software. It can seem a little brain bending at first, but essentially software developers create kits that automate and streamline many of the basic functional coding processes. If you think about it, coding involves writing a lot of the same things over and over and over again. Things like routines, functions, and characters. Coding also involves keeping a lot of things organized as individual lines of code have to fit into larger overall projects, into file structures, and then ultimately into the program or the app itself. A good software development tool makes things efficient by automating repetitive tasks and keeping things organized and properly structured. You may see your software development tool referred to by several names. You'll see SDK, API, IDE. The alphabetics can be a bit confusing until you get used to it. But the main thing is to focus on the tool's capabilities and functions. That is, focus on what the tool will help you do. Good tools automate processes. Good tools integrate other functional tools, like debuggers, for example. Obviously, good tools make it possible for you to write, tweak, or edit code, whether it's written by you or by someone else. Finally, as coding progress accelerates, we're starting to see more and more non-coding tools emerge. These make it possible to create code without actually writing it, by using WYSIWYG interfaces, for example. So let's look at some of the alphabetics in detail. Letters sometimes really do matter. An SDK or a software development kit is a set of tools that helps you create software. SDKs are essential for coding any contemporary programming language and most SDKs come bundled with various APIs or application programming interfaces. The API provides a framework for coding a specific application or language. The application programming interface provides a visual, familiar user environment to program a specific application. It provides, if you will, a place where coders can use and deploy the functions of a software system. There are several types of APIs. General APIs are bundled with full-blown programming language packs, such as the Java API or the C++ standard template library. Specific APIs are intended to handle a particular task. For example, the Google Maps API is used just to program Google's mapping function. Google makes the API available to developers, and developers use it, in turn, to program Google's mapping function. Then there are service-oriented APIs, not specific to one language, but rather meant to be integrated with other services. For example, a Google Map layered with local restaurant info might integrate a restaurant search service with the Google Map API so that a user can search for a particular restaurant or restaurant type and have the Google Map show up right in the search result. This is a quick look at a screen grab from one of the Google Map APIs. It's for our reference only, just to see how an application programming interface looks. 
Notice it features a structure on the far left, coding tools in the middle, and buttons for automated functions on the right. While each API has its own shape and process, the functions are very similar from tool to tool. You'll also see the term IDE a lot. An IDE is an integrated development environment. It's a full-fledged software development kit, a comprehensive set of tools for programming a language. It knows the programming language you're using, both structurally and functionally, so it greatly simplifies coding by providing a full tool set for creating code. Common IDE tools include a text editor, so you can write, import, and review code, often with a syntax manager to help you keep programming syntax correct and consistent. A compiler or an interpreter, which translates your code into a machine-readable format for your app. Build automation tools, tools that automate common tasks and processes, and usually a debugger. Do you need anything else to start creating code? To start writing anything in Java, we highly recommend that you use a Java IDE. The Eclipse IDE is available for free at Eclipse.org and is a world-class tool for coding in Java. Many developers also use the NetBeans IDE. If you have a preference, feel free to use NetBeans instead of Eclipse. The processes are very comparable and, of course, every tool has its loyal following among app developers. To code Android apps, you will need the Android Developer Tools, which you'll see referred to as ADT, which is a kit that plugs into the Eclipse IDE. It's a kit within a kit. Just download and initiate the plugin. There are similar tools for NetBeans. To code for iOS on the iPhone or iPad, you will need the Xcode resource. It's available in, in Apple's developer section, and just remember that you'll need a Mac running an Intel processor in the latest Apple operating system to code native iPhone apps. Finally, BlackBerry and Windows Phone offer their own developer toolkits for free. This, the processes are similar, so we won't go into great detail here, but you, but you can download the developer tools in their various developer environments. At some point, it can all seem kind of confusing, but the terminology is important. Let's break down the actual tools you'll need to create code. For any Java-based code, you first need the Java SDK, also referred to as the JDK, the Java Development Kit. Note that Java has two general levels of tools. The Java Runtime Environment, you'll see referred to as the JRE, is the virtual machine that lets Java programs run on your computer. That won't help you code Java projects, it's only for running Java programs once they're loaded onto your computer. To code, you need the JDK. There are download directions in the course. Once you've downloaded and installed the JDK, you're ready to load the Eclipse IDE and then plug in platform-specific tools. For example, for Android applications, you'll need the Android SDK, which includes the Android Developer Tools ADT kit. For iOS, iPhone or iPad, you'll need the iOS SDK, including the Xcode environment. For BlackBerry or Windows Phone, you'll need their respective developer kits. Is it confusing? No need to panic. If all the terminology seems overwhelming, just take a deep breath. Practically speaking, you'll soon identify yourself more with your preferred platform, and the rest will seem less relevant. Just as important, the toolkits all fit together. For example, in Android world, the Java SDK, or JDK, runs with the Eclipse IDE, which features Android developer tools, the ADT plugin. Sounds confusing, but once you start downloading and installing tools, you'll see that they fit together very nicely. Here's a simple way to get started. Just download one full development environment of your choice. Let's take an example. To code in Android, you'll need a Java-based software development kit, starting with the Java kit itself. We've already talked about the JDK. An IDE, we recommend Eclipse, but remember you can also very easily use NetBeans if that's your preference. And then developer tools. Sticking with the Android example, you would download the Android Developer Tools ADT plugin for Eclipse. There is a similar plugin for BlackBerry and comparable tools for both iOS and Windows Phone. 
The important thing is to get comfortable with a coding tool that suits your style and helps you achieve your objectives as a developer. Last but not least, you'll sometimes hear the word framework, especially in web development circles. It will come up for us again and again as we encounter the mobile web. A framework is a software tool that automatically provides the structure behind the language you're coding. It automates lower level processes for things like file naming conventions, directory structures, and common code libraries, especially on the web. A framework handles all the behind the scenes issues so you can focus on creating great code. This has been a brief introduction to the environment and the tools involved with coding applications.